All right, so today we're gonna to be painting a scene from Two Medicine in Glacier National Park. It's gonna be a little six by six piece. And here we get going with the drawing. Now this phase is extremely important. Drawing is the foundation of everything for me, particularly as an artist, and it's something that I, I use before pretty much every painting. So this little sketch is done just to lay in those major shapes and angles, and I don't go through all the detail, and that's all it takes. And I get going with the sky in the background because it's the easiest thing to mix up and paint, and it really helps establish the atmosphere and the major colors that will be influencing everything else in the piece. Adding some variety in this, the gradients, thinking about the clouds now and some of those white highlights, but diluting them back a little bit and blending them into that sky so it's not a very you know, bright, crisp cloud. It's actually kind of a softer one, as you can see in the photo. You're adding a little bit of blue, the sky, sky holes as they're called in trees or clouds, that helps give that extra dimension to the sky, push that atmosphere and that detail. Just softening things back here. Again, looking for those little gradients, modifying things ever so slightly. The sky needs to be very subtle and controlled in order to seem like it's far away little dark will help emphasize the storm that coming in on the left which I'm adding a little bit of drama by doing that rain effect with light the skies blocked in moving forward into the mountains these values and colors are extremely important everything else will build off of them so again we're moving from the sky into that background edge Just doing some simple massing, getting those major shapes kind of laid in, following my lines. I'm not loading on the paint super thick right here, but I'm definitely trying to articulate my drawing. All right, moving into the sunny side of the mountain. Look at that close relationship between the shaded side and the sunny side. That's very, very subtle. Slightly warmer, but still a very cool gray, ultimately. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of these areas and kind of blend them in as needed. Crisping the drawing process of this. Searching for, again, those subtle gradients that help create the illusion of detail. All right, this area I've mopped in some lighter values. I'll go through and create the shadows of the, the peaks kind of coming closer, just to get slightly darker and warmer as the atmosphere is less influencing those colors. But as you'll see in a little bit, it's definitely still a lighter blue color compared to the tones that will be in the foreground. some gradients. This area is adding some warmth. It uh, creates the reflected light sensation, which you can see from those basic spheres you do in drawing school. The same principles apply even on the landscape. Get a little bit of detail here. Chopping in some other little shapes and again, just continue to modify things that the mountain seems like it's pretty well blocked in I'll move into the foreground area or middle ground even I'm not really sure what you'd classify this area but adding a little bit of green getting the warmth and the light element going helping to create that glow effect I'll often start with lighter tones and then cut in with my darker ones here is the strong tree shape that you can see in the reference photo. I'm going to modify it a little bit so it works better with the peak. Just mopping in some of those basic thin shadows. This is where I'm trying to structure the, that background mountain in detail to the foreground. Tweaking those small shapes, I'm able to have a little bit more influence over that depth. This is 
relatively turped out wash without a lot of color. Really just trying to nail those values. There's a slight green in there, but it's obviously a lot cooler, darker than the background, so I can help create that light effect and that sensation of the glowing. I'm not paying attention to any particular details here. This is still just a really loose uh, block-in phase. During this phase of the painting, I'm usually stepping back quite a bit, making sure that the piece has integrity from far away. As I get more comfortable with it, I'll add these smaller details, kind of gradiating that detail effect from the background to the foreground. Things that are farther away, usually you can see a little less detail in them compared to the foreground. Adding these rock elements. Finally finishing out with a little trail, getting that color and value right against the green was pretty challenging. You can see I kind of hunt around looking for the right piece. There it is, pretty much blocked in. This detail phase is nitpicky. You should try to find elements that are most important and work backwards from there. A lot of these details are not particularly important. I'm not trying to follow the reference photo in its entirety. Obviously, from the beginning, you can tell that I make uh, quite, a, quite a few edits to this. Nature is full of variety, so I try to, try to create that effect, but not copying the same tree over and over again is a common thing that I will catch myself doing. You know, adding some gradients here, adding the branches to the tree. Using a small round brush for most of these detail effects. It's very easy to get in and blend and kind of combine the colors, create some softness effects, create random effects. Round brushes are a pretty big, big part of my workflow. I'm working back in the background area, trying to bring that spine of the mountain forward and add more detail to the left side of the piece. Things I didn't quite block in, but are easy to modify now. I decided to add a waterfall back there so that I'll have just a little bit more to look at, building up in preparation of adding that. So here we go with the waterfall. Oh yeah. And finishing, I'm starting to unify things, some little key highlights and warmths, I wanted to just sneak around the piece. And then signing, it's kind of the final piece. I think outside of this I was able to add some flowers or uh, leaf effects to things. And this is an a la prima piece, just knocked out. Normally I would also wait to let this dry and then add some glazing effects, but this was just a one-off deal. There it is. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any other questions or things you'd like to hear me explain. Appreciate you all. Happy painting.